Hello, and welcome to this temporal tutorial. This is a great place to start if you are new to temporal. Together, we will complete several runs of a temporal workflow application using the temporal server, Java SDK and Gradle. As we go through it, we will be sure to call out several of Temporal's value propositions and show you how it can relieve many pains that you experience as a developer. Let's get started by setting up our project. Before we proceed, make sure you have already looked over the tutorial prerequisites. You should already have the Java JDK, Gradle, and or the IntelliJ IDE, and the Temporal server installed and running in the background. This tutorial uses a fully working application template that mimics a money transfer. You can get the project template by downloading it as a zip or by creating a new repository in your own GitHub account and then cloning the repo to the location of your choice. Look for the Use This Template button. Once you have it, open your terminal in the project's root directory, or open it in IntelliJ and use Gradle to build it. When the project is finished building, you are now ready to go. To run the application, we will need to send a signal to the temporal server to start the money transfer. The temporal server will then start tracking the progress of your workflow function execution. Then we will run a worker. A worker is a wrapper around your compiled workflow and activity code. A worker's only job is to execute the activity and workflow functions and communicate the results back to the temporal server. This project mimics a money transfer application, and it includes a predefined transfer money workflow function, which orchestrates the execution of withdraw and deposit account object functions, representing a transfer of money from one account to another. It also includes a predefined function to start the workflow. Make sure the temporal server is running in a terminal and then initiate the money transfer workflow. Now it's time to check out one of the really cool value propositions offered by Temporal, Application State Visibility. Visit the Temporal web UI to see your workflow. Click the Run ID for your workflow. Now we can see everything we want to know about the execution of the workflow code we told the server to track. It seems that our workflow is running, but why hasn't the workflow and activity code executed yet? Investigate by clicking on the task queue name to view active pollers registered to handle these tasks. The list will be empty. There are no workers polling the task queue. It's time to start the worker. From a terminal, run the worker from the project root. When you start the worker, it begins polling the task queue. The worker finds the task that tells it to execute the workflow function. The worker communicates the event back to the server, which then causes the server to send activity tasks to the task queue as well. The worker then grabs each of the activity tasks in their respective order from the task queue and executes each of the corresponding activities. Congratulations, you just ran a temporal workflow application. Let's explore a few other key value propositions. To demonstrate this, we will simulate some failures for our workflow. Make sure your worker is stopped before proceeding. Temporal automatically preserves the state of your workflow even if the server is down. You can easily test this by following these steps. Start the workflow again. Verify the workflow is running in the UI. Shut down the temporal server by either using Ctrl-C or via the Docker dashboard. After the temporal server has stopped, restart it and visit the UI. Your workflow is still there. 
Next, let's simulate a bug in the deposit activity function. Let your workflow continue to run. Open the account activity implementation.java file and uncomment the line that throws an exception in the deposit function. Save it and run the worker. The worker completes the withdraw activity function but throws the error when it attempts the deposit activity function. Notice how the worker automatically keeps retrying the deposit function? To view information of what is happening, visit the UI and click on the Run ID of the workflow. You will see the pending activity listed there with details such as its state, the number of times it has been attempted, and the next scheduled attempt. So. Your workflow is running, but only the withdraw activity function has succeeded. Pretend that you found a potential fix for the issue. Switch the comments back on the return statements of the deposit function in the account activity implementation.java file and save your changes and restart the worker. On the next scheduled attempt, the worker will pick up right where the workflow was failing and successfully execute the newly compiled deposit activity function, completing the workflow. You have just fixed a bug on the fly without losing the state of the workflow. Great work! You now know how to run a temporal workflow and understand some of the key values temporal offers. See you in the next tutorial!